Diablo 3D is a mod for the modern Doom engines like GZ Doom, and it's probably most similar to Hexen or Heretic, but it's really its own standalone thing. What it is, is basically the original Diablo game from 1997 rebuilt for the Doom engine. It is very true to the original Diablo in some respects, but it takes many elements from Hexen and Heretic. Some stuff from Diablo 2, as well as plenty of its own artistic license. All of this leads to it feeling less like Diablo in 3D, and more like a bizarre Diablo themed LSD Doom nightmare. But I don't mean this badly, Diablo 3D is pretty cool, and I can only imagine the sweat, blood and tears that went into creating this mod. Bringing Diablo into 3D is very interesting. It is quite immersive, and stuff like lighting plays a big role that it really doesn't in the original game. These dungeons are very dark. It also adds new dangers not possible in the original game, like gigantic chasms and seemingly bottomless pits that you can fall into while stumbling around in the dark. There is a torch you can use, but it's a very rare drop, and it must be used sparingly. It's also the brightest torch you'll ever see, because it seems to completely eradicate all shadow everywhere in the entire dungeon. Somewhat unfortunately, the mod doesn't follow the Diablo classes to a T. It uses the Wrath of Kronos mod, and so instead of getting a Diablo 2 Necromancer, you get the same one as in Wrath of Kronos. This is a shame because I was really hoping for a fresh experience in this regard, and something resembling the abilities of the Diablo 2 Necromancer. Nevertheless, the Wrath of Kronos mod is an awesome necromancy mod for Hexen, and I have an entire video on it, which you can watch, where I go into that mod in great detail. So if you want to know more about that, I recommend you go check out that video, now or after this one. There are some very minor differences to the necromancer between the Wrath of Kronos mod and the version used by Diablo 3D. For example, I noticed that the ghoul minion here has a much cooler sprite for its animations. It looks like a proper undead minion in this, although it unfortunately transforms back into a golem looking thing when it attacks. Which is honestly rather comical. This minion is kind of hilarious to watch because while it's walking around as a skeleton and transforming into a golem when it attacks, it also lies down on the ground when it does its poison nova ability. I can't help but be amused whenever I see it bouncing around like this and transforming. Even though Diablo 3D uses some enemies from Diablo 2, it is far far closer to Diablo 1, and it has also implemented the same biomes as Diablo 1. You start out in Tristram, and it's pretty cool to see it in 3D. There aren't many NPCs from what I can tell, just Griswold who can't be interacted with, and a merchant who you can trade with, if you can stomach these awful Doom menus. Items can be cycled through using the square bracket keys, then used with Enter. Most of these are power-ups and things from Hexen and Heretic, but some are things meant for use with the Wrath of Kronos systems, like the flasks, which can be used for alchemy, or these pieces of equipment, which can be worn to boost your armor. You can see your armor in the Wrath of Kronos stats. These purple potions are called Quartz Potions, and can be carried and used to restore your health. Blue potions can be found all over the floor in the dungeon, and walking over them consumes them and heals you. Likewise, these little floating prisms of runes on them restore your green and blue mana sources, which power Hexen and Heretic weaponry. As you can probably tell, this system is nothing like Diablo and is very much Hexen-like. When you walk through the village and go up the windy road to the cathedral, you can enter the dungeon. This will dump you in the first biome of Diablo 1. The cathedral levels. I can compare what the levels look like in this to how they look in Diablo 1, although please be aware, this footage is from modded Diablo 1. It's from a mod called The Hell 2, which adds awesome necromancy, as you can see. I don't have vanilla Diablo installed, so I must demonstrate this with modded footage. In any case, the dungeon layouts, etc. are identical, but the monsters do differ. So as you can see, there is a resemblance, although not quite. You know you're supposed to be in a cathedral biome, but it isn't really all that similar to what you'll find in Diablo. But it's good anyway. Most of the enemies are on point and you'll find Fallen, who unfortunately use the Diablo 2 sprite, and a mixture of Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 sound effects, which I find to be a shame. Honestly, I would have preferred no Diablo 2 stuff in this, aside from the Necromancer class of course, 
because I find this mixing of stuff to be not so nice. But it's probably a matter of taste. Plenty of enemies also use sprites from Hex and Heretic and Doom games too, which does make sense. For example, skeletons. The most impressive thing about the Fallen to me is that their AI works properly. They are cowardly and retreat when comrades die or when they get hit too hard. Something I don't like too much about the levels in Diablo 3D is that they rely on this system of runes to unlock doors which will lead to the next level. This isn't something from Diablo at all, and the levels are full of traps and little puzzles like having to check every sarcophagus for an ugly face which when pressed opens the door. This is of course stuff that's not in Diablo and you might find yourself wandering the dungeon aimlessly for a long time until you figure out what you're meant to do. I had to make extensive use of the wall hugging tactic, where you pick a wall, even left or right, doesn't matter, and you hug this wall, following it all throughout the dungeon to force each and every nook and cranny to be explored, and just maybe you find that damn rune or ugly face to punch to lead to the next area which contains that rune you need. Once you get the rune, you can pass on to the next level. Some levels contain multiple rune doors though, so it can be quite an easter egg hunt. We of course also get to fight the Butcher, who has been faithfully copied, but the Butcher's room is quite different as you can see. Speaking of music for a moment, Diablo 3D uses music from Diablo 1 most of the time, but it is unfortunately chopped in half, so you only get to hear part of the entire track. I'm not sure why this is, perhaps Iron Tusk just didn't like those parts of the original tracks, but I find it to be an irksome detail. Next we come to the catacombs biome. This is my favourite part of Diablo 1's environment because it is so mysterious. You've got these ancient twisting corridors and a bleak crumbling aesthetic that really intrigues me. Not to mention this area is home to many libraries where you can get new spells and it also is home to very intriguing areas like the strange room containing Arcane's armor, as well as the Chamber of Bone, but also my favorite, the Halls of the Blind, which has some really cool lore. You see not, vision milky, then eyes rot. When you turn, they will be gone, whispering their hidden song. Then you see what cannot be, shadows move where light should be. Out of darkness, out of mind, cast down into the Halls of the Blind. The Halls of the Blind kind of resemble the ones from Diablo 2 in shape, being these two rooms in a sort of diagonal hourglass with a spiral staircase in the middle. But the problem is the enemies contained within. It's supposed to be full of a special type of monster which is invisible until it attacks you. These monsters are called the Hidden or the Unseen, something like that. And I think it's an important feature to have in the Halls of the Blind because it's like you're blind you can't see the enemies attacking you. But in Diablo 3D there's just standard monsters in there, so it's a shame. In the catacombs, goat men start to appear, both in Diablo 1 and also in Diablo 3D, and the Diablo 3D version of the goat men seems very faithful to the original. The sound effects are mostly the same, as well as their relative strength and toughness, but the only difference is that they use a sprite from either Doom, Hexen, or Heretic, and not the Diablo 1 sprite. A shame, but not the biggest deal. Also present are these annoying wind things that like to zap you with electricity, so that's definitely a faithful detail. As to the appearance of the catacombs in Diablo 3D, I don't think it's that close or faithful to the original, unfortunately. It tries, but something is off. And again, this is my favourite area, so I'm highly critical. Of all the areas in Diablo 3D, the caves biome is where it really feels the most like the original, in my opinion. The music is there, the rocky wall textures look pretty good, lava is everywhere, and the monsters are on point. You've got these big demon dudes, those nasty dog things that spit acid, as well as horned demons which use the pinky sprite from Doom. In standard Diablo you can't walk on the lava. But in Diablo 3D you're forced to jump and sprint over lava as quickly as possible to avoid taking any damage, but navigating it is a must to make progress. The caves are often very dark, incredibly dark, 
so dark that you couldn't see your own hand in front of your face. So torches really help out down here. And I find this oppressive darkness very suitable for the caves area. The darkness is twice as dangerous as normal too, due to these gigantic chasms you can find around the place. The primary inconsistency between the caves in Diablo versus Diablo 3D is that the only structures you'll find in the standard Diablo in the caves are makeshift wooden fences and crude wooden doors. These are missing in Diablo 3D. Instead you have these stone structures with many rooms inside that must be unlocked with rooms. The next biome or area after the caves in standard Diablo is Hell, and it appears to be missing from Diablo 3D. Maybe I somehow missed it, but it seems like the final cave level just contains a portal that dumps me back out in Tristram. Of all the levels in Diablo, Hell is probably the trickiest one to implement because of the way the walls are made of huge pointy bones and the areas between the walls are filled with blood. Another interesting detail in this mod is that portals cannot be made. In Diablo 1, you have like scrolls of town portal that you can use to make a portal to town. But in Diablo 3D, the portals are fixed and they're just somewhere in the level, maybe. And you find them and you can go through them. In conclusion, this mod is very cool. I never thought I'd get to experience Diablo in 3D like this. And honestly, I'd like to see more of it. I have to admire the work that's been put into this because Diablo 3D is also very faithful to the standard Diablo in that the levels are randomly generated. So there's some nice replay value here, and that surely wasn't easy to implement. My criticisms of Diablo 3D are chiefly that the Wrath of Kronos mod is used. I love Wrath of Kronos and what it brings to the Doom Engine games, but it's not Diablo. That said, I'll happily take Wrath of Kronos' Necromancer over no Necromancer at all. My second criticism is that I don't like the mixing of assets. It'd be really nice if only Diablo 1 sprites and sounds were used. Diablo 1 has cool sprites, many of them cooler than Diablo 2's in my opinion, like the Succubus. Go compare Diablo 1 Succubus to a Diablo 2 Succubus and tell me which one you prefer. But it goes beyond the Succubus, I also prefer the way the Fallen look. I must admit, it's hypocritical of me on one hand to be saying it should be completely like Diablo 1, while also saying it should have a Necromancer like Diablo 2, but really, Diablo 1's classes suck. Diablo 2's classes are infinitely better, and it's honestly a no-brainer. I can't even play Diablo 1 unmodded because it has next to nothing for a minion mats to play style. Also, I feel like most of the hex and inherited power-ups and items should probably go to. These things don't fit the experience in my opinion, but keep the cool laser cube because it's like a miniature minion. My third criticism is just the inventory and menus. Honestly, they're probably forced to work within the Doom framework, so these nested menus and things probably can't be avoided. But it would be so cool if there was a grid-based inventory and actual equipment slots and stuff like that. Finally, the mod seems unfinished. Like, there's almost no NPCs in town and the mod doesn't go beyond the caves. So I think there's certainly work left to do. I'm not sure if it'll ever get done though. I have no idea what Iron Tusk's plans are whether the mod is actively being worked on, or if it's on hiatus, I really don't know. If it does get finished though, I'll certainly try it again. As for a score, if I had to score as Minimancy, I'd give it the same score as I did for Wrath of Kronos, since the mechanics are the same. So go check that video out if you're interested in that. Thanks so much for watching, I hope this video has been interesting and given you something to amuse yourself with. I've got more videos in Necromancy stuff coming soon.